Hi, I'm Deepak Bhatt at TCT 2013 with ongoing coverage from CardioSource, and we're going to discuss three exciting trials that were just presented. And here with me today are two superstar interventional cardiologists and good friends, Dr. Roxana Moran and Dr. Jeff Papa. So let's start off with the optimized trial. Now, Roxana, you were the chair of the DSMB. Uh, do you want to just tell us what the design of that trial was? Thank you, Deepak. Um, thank you for disclosing that I was the uh, chair of the DSMB. It's important for our viewers to know that. But um, uh, and I should mention I was the uh, I was on the steering committee too. In terms that's of right. Disclosure. It's an I'll important. Just say it's I had important. To do with the trial. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it is important. But but I think this is a, a very very important trial. Uh, and although the Endeavor stent is not being uh, used as much or at all uh, in this country, what's really, really important and I think very much topical is this short duration versus a long, the normal duration of dual antiplatelet therapies. As, you, as everybody knows, we're giving 12 months based on no real data, just the gestalt that we need to cover patients with DES for 12 months. This study, for the first time, not in a large numbers of patients, 3,000 patients were randomized to receive a 12-month standard of care dual antiplatelet therapy versus a three-month um, uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. And the, uh, the overall um, endpoint was a combined endpoint of major adverse uh, cardiac events and major bleeding, so the NACE, the Net Adverse Clinical Events, um, and it was the NACE was chosen so that we could study 3,000 patients because if you can imagine in the stable population, this could have been into the 10 or 20,000 patient study right. to actually separate the ischemic and the bleeding complications. So that's really the, that so, was the design. Right, yeah. and, and so bottom line, it, it was uh, non inferior to use three months versus 12 months. So right. that I think is consistent with other trials in the DS world that have shown that maybe you don't need to go 12 months. Yeah. But you know, Jeff, what's your take yeah, with, so with couple, all of this? A couple thoughts up front is that although we generally tend to put all drug eluting stents in the same class, uh, the phosphorylcholine coating on the Endeavor stent is a little unique and it's felt to be antithrombotic, and we saw at this trial that the PROTECT-2 trial actually had a reduction in very late stent thrombosis, and I've right. always felt that that may have been due to the intrinsic polymer. So al although we're going to make general statements about drug eluting stents in general, yes. the Endeavor stent may have been a little bit different. Right. But the, I think the more important piece, I think there's two points. Is one is that the event rates were low. I mean, good for folks undergoing stenting now because we have right. very low event rates, and that might have some statistical impact in terms of the delta that's picked for the non-inferiority. Sure. But, but, se but secondly, I think the, the broader implication is that stenting now with the second and third generation stents has been viewed as safer. And when we began into the realm of one year and two year dual antiplatelet therapy, we were dealing with the first generation stents that weren't so good with cipher taxis. Right. So I think two things are really operative here. One is that, that, that the event rates are low for people, I think that's good, and that may be attributable to the next generation stents. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this as useful information to me. I mean, in a patient who might be at high risk for bleeding or has a bleeding problem, I think the cessation early on with a drug eluting stent at three months might be useful. But I think the caveats for that are going to be that the Endeavor stent may be different than the other drug eluting stents. Sure. The good news is all of these stents are becoming much safer. Right. And I think the registry data as well support that Many times you can get away with a shorter duration of DAPT yeah. if you have to with second generation DS. Yeah. So it seems to be a consistent message, but, but what do you think? It is, a, it, it is absolutely consistent, but Deepak, for the newer stents and other stent platforms, we really do need prospective randomized trials Agreed. that are well powered and are looking at that. And I'm proud to say that uh, Abbott just uh, announced yesterday in a press, conf uh, in a press release that they right. are going to uh, uh, do exactly this with 6,000 patients uh, randomized to three versus 12 months. And I, I'm uh, honored to uh, to uh, lead that great. study with great. Mitch Krukov. And that, that's, that's great because they have a label indication in Europe for shorter duration, but I think this is actually very, it's very really good to actually do the to science. Look at that. Critically important perfect, trial, and perfect. you should have the power really to nail down the answer. So great to see Optimize in that same direction. Yes, yes, very reassuring, especially from a safety perspective in terms of launching a big trial. You want at least some signal that it's not a crazy idea to do three, and I think Optimize yeah. provides a lot of reassurance that three, mm -hmm. probably okay, at least in patients that aren't high risk yeah, in terms right. of ACS risk. 
Well, that's good. Let's move on to Arctic interruption. And in many respects, the, the theme continues. That was examining a 12 months versus longer DAPT. And it was a bit hard actually enrolling patients in that trial because a lot of doctors said, I'm going to continue DAP beyond 12 months in higher risk patients, presumably. But the investigators ultimately did uh, complete the trial and it didn't seem that longer was better than 12 months. So once again, a trial that didn't support a longer duration of DAP. So what do you both think? Roxana, is that Well, uh, I mean, I think I want to congratulate Jill Montalesco for leading these types of very important studies and, and very similar to what we're seeing in, in right. the DAP study when patients, yes. it was difficult to randomize them at one year. Right. We, the same thing was found here in the Arctic interruption. And uh, here, uh, these were, as, as everyone, and I'm not sure if our viewers know, but Arctic allowed the use of PRUs and platelet right. function testing to actually escalate or make an important choice in the more potent agents in those patients who had um, a, a high PRUs, and there was no difference uh, using that strategy of, of guiding yeah, uh, platelet, yeah. platelet function guidance therapy. And at one year, after one year, only half of the patients were randomized. Right. Uh, but I think the theme is there that in the stable patient population who actually passed the bleeding test and yeah, the ischemic right. test after a year, if you give them an aspirin um, and, and stop that, it's going to be okay. Now, of course, we're not powered with the half of the half of the population, right. we have to wait for the DAPT study of Laurel Murray and and Dean Kariakis. But I think the, the the spirit is, and we're seeing this. We saw it in the Excellence study. We saw it in the Prodigy study, that maybe these long long term dual antiplatelet therapies may not be needed. Look, in, going in back a little bit in time in Charisma as well in the overall trial, you know, it didn't actually meet its primary endpoint. So at least in a broad population of non ACS patients. It didn't seem that prolonged. So I feel like I have to useful. be the historian here a little bit, right? So <laughs> how did we get here? How did we get to the whole concept that dual antiplatelet therapy was going to be an indefinite piece, and you have to march all the way back to uh, the the, the uh, fall of 2006 when when we thought everything was fine with right. just a year of dual antiplatelet therapy, and then we saw this beast of very late stent thrombosis, yes. which I still think now retrospectively was due to the two first generation drug looting sense that we use with the oh, polymeric coating yeah. over there with the cypher taxis. And Ray Vermani told us we were going to see that. Well, we, we were, and, right. that, and, that, she and did. that was, and that she was, was a first generation piece, right? So, but what's happened is, is we've now embarked upon 20,000 patient randomized trial for, for short versus longer duration dual antiplatelet therapy is now we've changed the whole script. We're dealing with different stents, different paper populations, different pieces, and so right. I was always hoping that there might be a benefit from, based on your work from Charisma, that in these patients with very active yes. atherosclerotic plaques requiring stenting and symptoms, that maybe the, the dual antiplatelet therapy would have a secondary prevention on NMI. And maybe I could get Deepak to speculate a little bit about, you know, if it's not stent thrombosis, it, are there any other potential atherosclerotic stabilization pieces that dual antiplatelet therapy would do? And, and if not, maybe we should be stopping everybody at three months. Yeah, I, I think it's a great question, but a complex one. And, and to simplify, for the sake of time, I think if a patient has a history of plaque rupture, there is likely a benefit of protracted dual antiplatelet therapy. And if they haven't, and they're getting a second generation DS, I'm not so yeah, convinced yeah, that that's there. Yeah. I think the second generation DS really are game changers in terms of stent thrombosis risk, in my opinion, better than even yeah. bare metal stents. So uh, if one believes that, you know, that rate of stent thrombosis gets so low, yeah, DAP probably helps prevent even those few stent thromboses with second generation DS, but the bleeding might overwhelm that little benefit. So, you know, we'll see what ongoing yep, trials yep. show, but I'm glad that you're, you're launching this, this big trial. That'll yeah, be important. But, 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 you know, I think I, wanna, I want our viewers to be cautioned to make sure that when they're looking at these trials that, and, and that for us as investigators to be really astute about this, to make sure that when we're presenting data that we separate stent-related events versus patient-related yeah, events. Exactly. And, exactly. and in this milieu of a patient with multiple plaques and, and everything else that's going on, the comorbidities, the, um, the lipid-rich plaques that are in these patients who are not reaching goal with right. their medical therapies, the prolonged dual antiplatelet therapy, if we do see a benefit, should not be engaged and married to the yes. stent, but rather to the patient. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's a really, really important point for, for our viewers, our cardiologists, our yeah. referring yeah. physicians and all 
to understand that concept very, so, very well. So, Deepak, is, is a prior history of an acute coronary syndrome going to be sufficient, do you think, until we have better evidence to say that's the syndrome of patients that well, we'll be you know, thinking about? Let me be clear, because this is a, a great, though, speculative conversation we're having. To the audience, I'd say, you know, stick with the guidelines for now, which say 12 mm -hmm. months of DAPT in ACS patients, 12 months of DAPT in DS patients, barring some bleeding problem. Uh, so uh, obviously it was good clinical sense. But yes, I think that's the real demarcating feature. If a patient's had an ACS, they've already ruptured a plaque, more likely to happen again. A and I think there, there may be a window for protracted DAPT. But on the other hand, I think if patients haven't had an ACS, you know, short of really complex bifurcation stenting, if it's second generation, I think you can probably get away with a shorter duration. But, you know, there are ongoing trials and we should really wait. Well, it's been a terrific discussion. Hopefully this was of interest to all of you. A very exciting TCT.